Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is March 9th. Can you believe it? Tuesday, March 9th. <laughs> and it's time for a prayer time. So this is something we've been doing for a couple months now. How is it today? Seriously, we I haven't seen anybody here. I know there's people here. Yeah, I'm starting to see comments. So that's good. Hey, Sandy. Good. <laughs> um, good, good, you guys, good. I'm calling Sandy out because um, I wrote a blog post about her ministry on my site yesterday. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. So kind of, kind of fun. Cool. Okay. So I do, I see Christy and Lynn and Letitia and yeah, pulled over on a country road to say you're here. Janice. <laughs> Janice <Yay>! and Jennifer. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Okay. okay. So that's good. Hey, Sandy. Good. Oh, is that yours? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. Is that your audio? Yeah, I just <laughs> muted it. Sorry. Again, it's the tech stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Always something. Always something. Okay. okay, so we're good. We're here. We're ready. Let's do it. All right, good. Okay, so for today, I think Jen is going to get us started, and then I will share my scripture. All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do um, the first scripture, and I am going to do a passage out of Ephesians um, chapter 4, and let's read um, verses 11 through 16, so just uh, about five verses, okay? So um, Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Okay, so we could dissect the scripture and I could do an hour long teaching on it, but I'm not going to, so you can say thank you. Um, because there's so much meat in this passage. So, um, you know, at some point you might want to come back and take it phrase by phrase and kind of, um, do some study on it because it's a really, really good passage. Um, however, the point that I kind of want to bring about and pray about is the fact that we're all given gifts. We're, we're all gifted by God and we all have, um, spiritual gifts in the church and, and we are kind of called to use those gifts. So, um, I don't want you to think of this as being something that's super duper, like out of reach kind of, you know, sometimes when we think of spiritual gifts, we think of like, Ooh, you know, what are my gifts? And I need to do surveys and I need to do la, 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 nothing wrong with that. But, um, it's important to know that at its base, at its root, you are called to, um, really you're called to equip the saints meaning we're called to sort of equip one another. And it says here in verse 16, 15, rather speaking the truth in love, right? So we are not to beat each other over the head with, um, with the truth. We're to, we're to speak the truth in love to one another. And that takes on a lot of different things, a lot of different kind of roles in the church, but it's important to know that we're all called for that. This is not just your uh, pastor, right? Or your, um, you know, your leadership team at your church. This is all of us are called to speak the truth in love because then it says, right? It says right here on 16 from the whole body joined and held together. When each part is working properly, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself in love. So we're all parts of the body. And so you have a role to play and I have a role to play. And they're they may look different based on our giftings and based on what um, we are comfortable in, what we're trained to do, what our natural aptitudes are. They may look a little bit different, but the goal is the same because as we strengthen one another, 
then as it says here, we, we, we lose our childlikeness in the fact of, I know we're to be childlike in our faith, but we lose our childlikeness in the fact that we're not thrown about. And they mention in particular false doctrines. And I know that this has come up a good bit, as a matter of fact, um, when we, you know, we're about to study James, it comes up in the, um, when we're talking about um, uh, in Ephesus, in, in Ephesians, there was a lot of false teaching there. We're, we're in Sojo Academy right now, we're studying the armor of God and spiritual warfare. And there was a lot of false teachings there. All throughout the Bible, this is kind of a theme. And we have that now. And our false teachings that we may succumb to may not be really quite obvious. They may be things like our cultural things that we are kind of you know, we, we, we kind of get a little bit of a uh, compromise on the biblical truth because of the, uh, we, we kind of move back and forth. What does it say? Ebb and flow uh, onto the, the wings of false um, teachings. So in order to avoid that, and in this culture in particular, in this culture right now, especially y'all, those of us who are raising children and young children and teenagers who are so impressionable, in this culture, there is the ability to get beaten back and forth and just and by all these false doctrines and the cultural calamity that is going on right now in our, um, in our entire world. And so what we're called to do is to take our giftings, use them for the gospel and for the advance of the kingdom and for the strengthening of the whole body. So again, that's a little bit of an oversimplification of this passage, I believe, but it is an important point, I think, to bring out. And that's what I'm going to pray for today. So does that make sense? Any comments on that, AJ? We don't know what our scriptures are for each other, by the way, so it's all just off the cuff if you have anything. But do you have anything <laughs> else to share? No, yeah, that's good. And it just reminds me to pray for our pastors too, you know, yes. and to be very careful which pastor we actually call pastor right because there's a whole bunch of people who want to give themselves titles that do not fit the qualifications in scripture was it which is a whole nother topic but that's kind of where my mind was going so right right well that's true and he does call out specifically um teachers and our shepherds um that's one of the things he he does you know in in this passage calls out and again we're in ephesians where there is ephesus where there is, uh, which is an Ephesus, which is all of the false um, gods that they've got big Parthenons for false gods. Who was it? Athena? I can't remember. All the false gods. Anyway, so, um, so yes, yeah, so it is really important that our pastors are discerning and wise and the Holy Spirit is guiding them and that they are most importantly preaching the word, right? So if you go to a church and your preacher, I'm a, okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't go down this path, I'm sorry. But if you go to a church, if you attend a church, or if you watch one online, if you can't go, and your preacher gets up and tells stories for 45 minutes and doesn't really preach from the word of God, then you need to find somebody who's going to teach you from the word, right? So we have to be discerning in ourselves, and we have to pray for our leaders, okay? And then we also have to be equipped to to really speak into the lives of others around us. Okay. Woo. All right. That was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. We're doing can a big burn right here. <laughs> can you tell that I'm a pastor's wife? I'm like all about the pastor. You got to, I mean, if my husband stopped preaching from the word, I would be like all over it. Okay. All right. So let's pray this passage guys. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to meet today. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of opening your word, for allowing us the privilege of gathering together in prayer, even in this platform. Um, I thank you, Father, for the women who are listening to my voice, either live or as a replay. I thank you, Father, for the um, just the relationship that I have with these women, even if I do not know them, because we are sisters in Christ. 
And I thank you, Father, that you do equip the saints for the work of ministry and that you have, each of us has a gift. We pray specifically for those who are leading us in leadership. We pray for, for their, um, I, I pray, Father, for their families. Selfishly, my own pastor, who is my husband, I pray for his family. <laughs> But we pray for those in leadership. We pray for their families. We pray for um, the spiritual attacks of the enemy over the past year that have come even more so than normal. We pray, Father, that they will stay in the word. We pray that they will hear from you and therefore they can speak to us in the congregation. I also pray, Father, that for each woman to recognize where she has been gifted and that she has the ability to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ. I thank you, Father, that you are going to allow us to mature as we get into your word so that we no longer are like children, that we are no longer tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, by deceitful schemes, because we are so susceptible to those things. I ask that you give us wisdom where we may be falling susceptible to these things, things that we don't really recognize as being deceitful. They can be in subtle ways, taking us away from the truth of the gospel. Allow us, Father, to stand firm and to not be tossed to and fro like that, like these young children. Allow us to speak truth in love. I pray, Father, that you give me in particular, give me discernment to speak truth and love, as that doesn't always tend to be my nature. I pray that you allow us to do that so that we can grow together into more Christ likeness, who you are the head of us. So I pray that you allow us to see the body of Christ as a body, and each of us has a part to play. Each of us, whether whatever part in the body that we are, it takes us all working together for this body to work properly, as your word says. And in doing so, we can make the body grow so it will build itself up in love. I just thank you, Father, for allowing me to be part of the body of Christ, for calling me, for, for saving me, for rescuing me from my sin, for rescuing me from God's wrath. I thank you, Father, that you have called me to be part of the body of Christ. And in so, in so I am part of the mechanism that helps to draw a dying world to you. And I pray for each of the ladies that's listening to us today, that you give them that realization, give them that reminder. And if they're not trusting on you, allow them, Father, to find someone to, uh, to share this with and to, uh, to teach them so they too can stand firm and not be tossed to and fro. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that we can glean from just a few passages in your Bible. And um, and I pray that in all of my frailty in explaining this and all of my um, miscommunication in explaining this, you will just cut that all away and let your word stand true and stand firm and speak to women today. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Amen. And I just want to remind everybody that this is a prayer time for us. So if you want to dig deeper into some of these passages, um, I know we mentioned we're doing the uh, Armor of God this month in Sojo Academy. But if you're really looking for Bible study, Sojo Academy is the place for that. Because this, we really can't go deep enough into the passages mm -hmm. that we bring up. This is mm -hmm. really just surface level here. <laughs> We'd be here all day. Honestly, I could be here all day on these five verses. But <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so, but that is really good. And the other thing is, you know, the, the passage that I selected, like Jen said, we do not plan these in advance. We do not like compare notes and like, I had no idea what passage she was going to say. And she had no, no, I, she has no idea which one I'm going to bring up, but I love how they do dovetail together. And for my passage, it's going to be from Isaiah 40. And I love how Jen, in the passage that she mentioned, said that we all work together and we all have a role to play, but we need to be working efficiently together. We need to be working well. We need to be serving each other. And one of the ways that we can do that is by being healthy personally as spiritually. I'm talking spiritually. Of course, we need to be healthy physically too, but spiritually our spiritual life needs to be healthy 
And a lot of times in church, it can be easy to go on autopilot and just kind of go through the motions because we, we know what they should look like and we know what we should be doing. And so we go through those motions, but we're not really tending to our souls. And so this passage, it's just a couple verses from Isaiah 40, but it really reminds me what is important and what I need to do for personal revival. And I think a couple of weeks back during our prayer time, we talked about all of the things that we have no control over in life, which is many, right? And sometimes we can be anxious about those things. Sometimes we can be disturbed by those things, but what we can do is focus on the things we can control. And that is our own spiritual health. Like we does, it doesn't matter what laws go into effect today. We can nurture our relationship with God through prayer, through Bible intake, through meditating on his word and relying on his spirit. And so these are the kinds of things that we need to be um, cultivating in our lives. And so Isaiah 40, it's going to be verses three through five that I read. They just remind me what to look for in my own life as I'm seeking personal renewal and personal revival and personal spiritual health, um, some categories of things to be aware of. And again, there's so much that could be said about the context and about how John the Baptist fulfilled this and like all kinds of stuff, but we're not going to go there because this isn't Bible study. I'm reminding myself. It's Bible study. <laughs> it's prayer time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to read this and then pray through it and bring out some things that way. So, but this is what it says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places a plain and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all the people will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And then if you think about how John the Baptist came and he fulfilled that, he was called the one, uh, the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And the, the first words that he spoke was repent. The kingdom of God is here, repent. And so it really is a call to personal repentance and personal revival. And so as I pray through this passage, I'm just going to ask the Lord to revive my heart, to revive our hearts, and to remind us that this is something that we can do, is to seek personal revival and renewal with him. So with that, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you give us an example in scripture of just seeking you and what that looks like. You give us men and women whose lives were lived through the pages of scripture that we can see um, who had a hunger and a thirst for you and what their lives looked like, what their spiritual disciplines looked like, some of their daily habits. And Lord, we can learn from them. And God, we can also see in scripture when our hunger for you is not um, where it needs to be. And sometimes our hunger and our appetites for the things of this world are greater than our hunger for you. And God, we confess that to you. We, we come before you and we confess to you that, that is, um, that's wrong. And we want that change, God. We want to hunger for you more than anything. We want the cares of this world not to choke us out. We want to be like Mary who um, made made the good choice, made the right choice. And that was to sit at your feet and not to be so distracted by the things around her, the, the, the cares of the world, the responsibilities, all of the tasks and to-do list that she missed, that Martha missed out on the thing that was the most important. And, and God, we just, we come before you and we confess that we're distracted. A lot of the times we're distracted and we need our hearts revived and refreshed. We want to be um, able players in this, this time that you have placed us in. We want to be kingdom-minded. We want to 
fulfill the roles that you have placed us here to do. And in order to do that, we might need, there may be some low places in our lives that need building up. Maybe we have a low view of you, God, and we need to get to know you in your character through your word. Or maybe we have some, some weak areas that, that um, need to be fortified in our, in our thinking or in our spiritual health, our spiritual disciplines. And so God, I, I just pray that you would reveal those things to us, reveal those areas that need to be fortified. And then God, there, there are mountains in our hearts. I know there's mountains in my hearts of, of pride and just of, of um, arrogance or unwillingness to bend that need to be brought low. And so God, I pray that you would reveal to me and reveal to us those places of pride that need to be leveled out that where we need to come down and to, um, to kneel before you and to recognize your sovereignty your greatness, your goodness, your king, kingship over our lives. And then God, maybe there's just some crooked ways that need to be made straight. Maybe there are things in our lives that um, we're more concerned about appearances than we are about character. Or maybe we are um, just fallen into patterns of compromise or um, apathy or laziness. And Lord, those ways need to be straightened and shaped up. God, I pray that you would reveal those things to me in my heart and in my life and reveal those things to us as your body so that we can uh, work with your spirit, Lord, to, to correct them and to come into alignment with what you would have us to be. And then God, maybe there are things that are um, boulders or uh, obstacles that cause us to stumble. God, maybe it is um, too much social media or too much of even, you know, watching the news or, or intaking different voices that, that cause us anxiety that is unnecessary and it gets our mind away from your truth and your word and your character. Um, Lord, maybe it is other, other appetites that draw us away from our first love. God, so many other things that could be just stumbling blocks in our paths that we need to remove and, and clear out the clutter from our hearts. And God, I pray that you would reveal that to me personally, Lord. I don't want any of those things to stand in the way in my walk with you or my ability to serve other people that you have placed me here to serve. And I pray that for each one of us who are um, here today praying together. God, I pray that we would be open to receive uh, the instruction that you would have for us and that just the fruitfulness that would come from that. And God, you promise that your glory will be revealed when, as, as we do repent, as we do this, this work, the spiritual work in our own lives, your glory is revealed. The way for you is prepared. And that is what we want. We want to see your glory. We want to see your kingdom expanded and we want to see you, God. And so, Lord, we ask and invite you to come and to do that and to do a work in our hearts that would um, usher your, in your presence, God, whatever that may be and whatever that may look like. Lord, we ask these things for your glory and, um, and just as, as part of your people and your body. And God, we know that you hear and you answer. And in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Good. Right. That is encouraging. I'm looking here. Did anybody have anything to share um, before we um, close us out and say goodbye for the day? Uh, anything about either of these passages or anything you'd like to share? Um, Jennifer brings up a good point. Once again, we mentioned Sojo Academy. <laughs> yeah. Didn't what it was. So sorry about that, um, Jennifer. Um, glad to have you, number one. But Sojo Academy and a lot of people, some of the people on this um, that are listening are in the Academy. So you guys can chime in and um, let us know, uh, let, let her know what it is. But it's basically, it is a, um, it's a membership for Christian women. And we go through Bible studies every month. And um, we have mentor time on Zoom where we all get on camera. We have um, a global community. We have 
reading plans. We have creative workshops. We have all kinds of, of stuff. You can read about it, but basically it's really AJ and us passion and our love and we adore the women in there. So, and we happen to be studying spiritual warfare this month. You can also purchase the Bible study in and of itself in the month that we're doing it. But um, I tell you, it's so worth it to do it together as a group. So, okay. Um, oh, Letitia, you've seen us on Clubhouse. Yeah, we, you know what? We haven't been over there for a couple of weeks. We need to pop in over there too sometimes. So, um, so that's awesome. It's glad, glad, glad to, great to have you. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so absolutely good. We need to um, go over there a little bit more frequently. That's a nice, that's a nice platform if you're on it because we don't have to actually get ourselves like clean and stuff. Just right. <laughs> it's audio only. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Very convenient. Um, so my passage of scripture, someone asked was Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 16. And, um, the replay will be up on this page where you're watching it. It's going to stay up until Facebook decides to bring it down. So, um, yeah, so we're good. Yeah. Well, it was really good to see you guys in the chat, in the comments. I guess chat is Zoom, comments is Facebook, whatever. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? <laughs> um, and, and some of you guys are pretty faithful to show up for our prayer time each Tuesday. We appreciate that. Um, it just, it, it makes it more meaningful when you guys are here and um, we're praying in one accord. So thanks for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Sherry's just giving us a rousing endorsement. So she says she's learned more in one year of Sojo than 25 years attending church. And uh, that makes me a little bit sad, honestly, but, um, but also glad that um, God has chosen to use our feeble efforts in such a way, Sherry. So yeah. Um, okay. So we appreciate you guys. Yep. And we will plan on, oh, 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 no, next week. No. What? No prayer time next week because we are actually doing a workshop oh. time next week. Is that just one week from now? It is one week from now. Yes. Yes, it is. So okay. you guys will have to, wherever you're watching this, we will leave a link next Tuesday morning on how to go join. Yeah, we're going to do a workshop on, should, can we give a spoiler? I sure. guess we give a spoiler. Yeah. So five ways, I don't even know, five steps to a meaningful daily quiet time. Something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure that like with the title, but that's close. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's going to be a um, kind of different thing. Yes. It'll be on Facebook. You'll have to register for the workshop. But right. we will make sure that you guys get um, a link to register for that. It's, it'll be free. I mean, it's free to register for it. So we'll make sure that you guys get a link. And then we'll be back in two weeks then. Yes. Yep. Two weeks, we will be back right here. And next week, we'll leave a link so that you know where to go join and see us next week. And it's actually at the same time, I think. It's at 11. Same time. Yeah. We had, we had requested to do this because we're, we're actually doing it for another organization and we had requested to do one o'clock and they were like, no, we need you to do 11. So that's, here we, are. here we are. It'll be good. We'll, we'll still gather together. It'll be fun. Yes. It'll be good. All right. Thanks you guys. We appreciate you. And if there is nothing else, we will plan on catching you next time. All right.